Saturday night, usual live stream, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Rough night at the grocery store. Uh, warm, warm day, and somebody comes in with a uh, full winter coat and a hat. And I said that didn't make sense. That was a red flag to me. So I watched him. Another couple tried to slip out with $400 of groceries at closing time at 9 o'clock, but I stopped it and found half of it thrown on the aisles, and I got it all put back on the shelf. That's my grocery rant for the day. Get rid of four things. Joseph Mancino said hello, Sticker Mania and family. George DeBito said hello. Nova's Nick said hello. Frank All right. And family. We got a good turnout. And Caesar said hi there. Frank and family. Everybody's ready to go. I got sticker granddaughter. I got sticker kid. Can you say hi? Finally. He's got my Ringo cap on. I just sold today for $199. Leather. Large size. Ringo cap. <clears throat> I read the Elvis. The Elvis Cup guy said, trivia answer, all three LPs are... Wait a minute, nobody's allowed to... You can't mention anything until I say go. <laughs> Nobody... I don't want anybody giving the answers on the trivia question. That'll happen in about 15 minutes. So don't put them, because we're not going to read them. Wait, was that the answer? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's the answer. I just skip it. Oh, okay. Alright. Nova's Nick said, oh wait. Yeah, Joseph Mancino said, sorry it was a crazy day. Crazy day in the grocery business. Uh, warm weather probably didn't help and now it's staying light almost till 8.30 at night. Uh, crazies come out before we close. All right, let's see. The trivia question we'll do in about 15 minutes. It's a three-part trivia question to win this. This was uh, found in a basement. A water uh, had some water damage. It was, you saw in one of my videos where it was um, peeled just on the bottom and I finished it up. And then to get that butcher cover sent to you, you have to know specifically, not just which album, but what makes this a Holy Grail, a Led Zeppelin 1969 album. What makes this Rolling Stones album? Have to be specific. 1969 album, what makes it a Holy Grail? Got to add a little more specific than just the name of the title of the album. And the last one that we'll open up, and by the way, this uh, Led Zeppelin album came all the way from Ukraine. Took me about three weeks to get it. And this is a Holy Grail from John Lennon from 1975. You got to be specific on the pressing and what's included inside the album. All right, so we'll do that in about 15 minutes. Let's put the sticker kit, can you put those right down there? I gotta cut Everyone it Everyone like, subscribe, and hit the notification link. Right there, carefully, can right I there. No, here, put this over there. One more. Yeah, one thing about the likes, my first part of my Peel on a Butcher Cover video that's eight minutes long has got about 2,700 views and 69 likes. Once you get over 50 likes, the rhythm changes and you get it goes viral. So I need more likes on the second part. A lot of people that have never watched my videos before watched that first peel and thought I was damaging the cover and I was an idiot and an old fool and I got called everything. But I told them they need to watch the second part. The second part, I think we have about 30 likes, so we need about 20 more likes on the second part of peeling the butcher cover so it'll go viral also. I'd appreciate the help. Talking about butcher covers, let's finish that up before going to see other things. Just got this in today if you want to show a close up of the 
second state, east coast. You can see Ringo's uh, V neck. You can see his head. Mm, really hard to kind of see it through the camera. But I Another see. one went off tonight a couple hours ago. It was at $777, a mono east coast in very good condition, but it had nice seams. And I bid over $1,000 with two seconds to go and won it for $840. So I'm trying to win half of all the nice East Coast butcher covers, mono and stereo that get up, come on the internet. Stockpile them for the next five years while my fingers still can peel them, steam peel them. You see back here on the back, got this from fellow friend, Beatles collector here in Louisville, Kentucky the other day. My large outtake of the butcher cover. If you notice Paul, you can see his chipped tooth on this, on this outtake. You can see all the bottom under the, the bench. And you can see uh, a pair of false teeth down there, and it looks like, I don't know, it's just different than the, but John pretty much looks the same, and Ringo and George looks the same, but Paul, you can see his teeth were in the final, the final one, I don't know if they fixed uh, airbrushed his teeth or what, but you don't see the chipped teeth in the final. This is my West Coast, I'm going to show close up a bit. I sold my other two East Coast uh, this week, uh, peeled butcher covers for $1,000 each. This is a, they had tears, this doesn't have tears on the West Coast, this is uh, $1,800. Alright, let's show some new arrivals before we have our trivia question. Kenneth Clark said, you can sell and a lot of people cheap, you can sell and a lot of people see cheap vinyls. I don't know what that means. A lot of people see cheap vinyls. That's it. Where's it at? Right there at the bottom. You can sell and a lot of people see cheap vinyls. Oh, on what not at. Oh, on what not at. Yeah, I don't sell on WhatNot app. I know Mike from the in-group does, and he has a big audio file uh, auction he's going to do in a couple weeks. I've been on eBay 17 years. I'll just stick with eBay. Yeah, what you need, sir? Are you going to tell me a joke? What do you want? What's your question? Why did your butcher cover peeling video barely get any likes? The second one? Yeah. They watched the first one, and people, like I said, thousands of people saw my first one that aren't my subscribers. And they only saw the end result where the paper was still on the butcher cover, and they thought I ruined it. But they don't know enough about how you steam peel a butcher cover. They didn't watch the second part where I make it almost perfect. Does that make sense? We had 60-some likes on the first video and then it went viral and then we get we were up to 2700 views on the first one we're only uh under 900 on the second one does that make sense at all all right got this today talked about it coming in this is the sergeant pepper 1987 hmv factory sealed compact disc and andrew from polygrams auction says this is the third Best sounding pressing of Sgt. Pepper after the Audio 5 and the Nimbus Supercut. He says this one is better than the, the uh, UK first uh, stereo, which I have up there. That's my uh, UK stereo first Stereo in 1967 from the United Kingdom. I don't know how a CD can sell them better than that, but he says it does. It was cut from the master tapes, this very first 1987 issue of Sgt. Pepper. Daniel Castillo said, do you look up to Andrew? I looked up to Andrew for years, but not in the last 
six months has been kind of, he's kind of gone downhill. He's either not interested in as much or he's just all about uh, making money on his videos. One more thing about Sergeant Pepper. I've been listening to this car a lot. This 2017 two uh, CD set, anniversary set, where it has all the outtakes of the uh, on the second uh, CD, and it was really more of a rocking album on the outtakes, and they toned it down for the final release. Read that last one. KRWD said, Hi Frank, I have a theory on the views on the second part of the Butcher Pill. Everybody saw the finished record, so they didn't feel the need to watch it. Hmm. We didn't show the finish. I don't get that either. Yeah, we never showed the finish. All we showed was uh, the paper and the glue still on the cover at the end of the first one. They just thought I uh, trashed the cover because they don't understand there's another layer that you uh, steam peel on carefully. And it took an hour and a half. All right, I thought this was pretty amazing today. I got this in yesterday. This came out in 1967 when they were trying to get portable uh, releases like four track tapes and eight track tapes. This is a play tape, and it only played four songs. Kansas City, you like me too much, I don't want to spoil the party, and what you're doing, made in Japan. Capital signed up on the play tape program in 1967. This is an original shipping box that held four of them that came from Japan, and there's one, if you can show a close up of that, factory sealed inside it. I'd say that's pretty amazing. The only time I've ever, ever seen the original shipping box available. It's up for sale on my Sticker Mania 2853 store at $399. I need that last one. I get what he means now. KRWD said, oh, I thought you had it on the show last time. My apologies, Frank. Because you did show it on the live. He yeah, we showed it the, on this mine, but the people watched, a lot of people watched the first uh, part of the peel. Uh, the eight minute version uh, haven't, haven't watched my videos. They just watched that one video and they, they thought I destroyed the butcher cover. I might have shown this in the last one. I can't remember. I don't think so. Uh -huh. This original. Early 1964 sheet music for Please Please Me. And it has an 85 cent price tag on it. And it has the copyright down here on the bottom of 1962 when Please Please Me was uh, recorded. But uh, this was quickly changed to 1964. So this is the very first issue. Oh, please please me on the top it says recorded by the Beatles on VJ Records number 581. <coughs> Show a little close up of that. <coughs> Go ahead and read that with Daniel. Daniel said. Castillo as the sticker boy wearing an original Kangol. He's re wearing an original Ringo cap. I think that's what it's called. Maybe. It's so original Ringo cap from 1964. That's the leather version. I think that's the most valuable one. I sold it for $199 today. It's a size large. It's made by the uh, Hats and Caps Millinery. Um, it was a union outfit and uh, that made hats and caps in 1964 in the United States. You want to back on? Careful, careful. It's already sold. It looks like the top of an oil. I showed the uh, Sgt. Pepper song book on the last one, I'm pretty sure. But I like how they show these colored pictures there of Paul and Ringo, the first very first pictures of the Beatles where they had mustaches. I see. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and read that. Daniel Castillo said Lennon wore a leather Kangol in Hard Day's Night. Yeah, he wore something like that on Hard Day's Night. 
But so, so Ringo wore a cap like that uh, when the Beatles came to Washington, D.C. on February 11th and when they were on the uh, train to Washington, D.C. for their very first concert. He was wearing a cap like that. Oh, cool cap. Uh, let's see, let's open this package from Perry Cox behind you there, dear. Before we open up the Holy Grails. This? Yes. Okay. This came from Perry Cox today. You got a new box cutter. I don't think I'll let Sticker Kid have it. Mm -hmm. Might be dangerous with it. You did go outside and get to play a couple times a day, didn't you, on your scooter? You went all over the neighborhood. Why wouldn't you let me touch it? Uh, because I've been advised <laughs> not to get in trouble by letting a kid do that. I'm, I'm not a kid, I'm a teenager. There's a little thank you note from... Yeah, you are. You're a 13-year-old teenager. Congratulations. So I can have the name. Can you put that uh, box over there out of the way for me, please? That's what we need to buy. So, you're right. so, so I got this from Perry Cox. It's got a little thank you on it. Thank you, Perry. And it's got a Rockaway Records uh, COA on the back. It's a factory sealed American tour with Ed Rudy. And it has the uh, magazine sealed inside and the little insert card. That's about as beautiful condition that came from the Ed Rudy estate when Gary Hine bought the whole uh, estate of everything was left. And then when he passed away, Rockaway Records got all of uh, Gary Hine's uh, nice items. This was one of them. Watch that COA. Ed Rudy, the American tour with Ed Rudy. New old stock from the Ed Rudy estate. And I got this today from Perry Cox. Another little thank you note. He puts thank you notes on everything. This is a first press 1967 mono of Sgt. Pepper from Australia. We'll see if it has minus one, minus one matrix on it. Minus one, minus one. Yes, it does. So it's made from the original plates. Near mint condition, mono pressing of Sgt. Pepper. I bet this, like Lennon said, you haven't heard Sgt. Pepper until you hear the mono. I bet you this has got to be an audiophile pressing. The Australians and the German Germans sure knew how to press the Beatle albums. Real nice laminated cover. Got the flaps on the top. It still cracks when you open it up. I'd say that's pretty beautiful. Nova's Nick said Exacto knife. Exacto knife? That's the one that I need to buy in for opening. It'd be smarter than what you, the little box cutter, but that's what I got at the grocery store. And then he said, young man to Skylar. He called you a young man. You're a man, but young. <laughs> All right, we'll get into the trivia question. I know you guys want to get into that. So most of my new arrivals have talked about the uh, Germans and Australians. This is a sealed... Magical Mystery Tour import um, with the Horzu cut, true stereo, minus one, minus three on the B side. You haven't heard Magical Mystery Tour until you play this album. It'll blow your socks off. But it's a song. You can't blow your socks off. And it's expression. Why? All right, let's get into open. Uh, let's get into the trivia questions. All right, the time started. Let's give me your three answers. Give me the three boxes. Oh my God, boy, help him! Not that, Not one. that one. The other Good. one. That's one from Ukraine. Led Zeppelin, 1969. 
what holy grail, what makes this a holy grail pressing of a Led Zeppelin oh, album from 1969? Oh, people are already coming in with a bunch of stuff. <laughs> you gotta have all three right. <laughs> and what makes this oh, Rolling Stones album from 1969 holy grail with all the extras that you need with it? Same with this John Lennon from 1975. All right, let me start looking at him. Yeah, that's it. I tear this off. Let it bleed with poster and fan club insert. That's close. John Lennon Roots LP with ad insert only available on TV three days. Led Zeppelin one turquoise letters cover. That's pretty close. Give it to him. Who's that? Who? Ready? Wait till I get it. Got a clock. Oh. The one I just read. The clock radio. Yeah, clock radio wins it. Well, that was fast. Somebody must have done their research. The first one. Yeah. The only thing is that you didn't say the poster, but that was close enough. I wish I had the fan club insert. I've had it before. question. There it is, the with, in the shrink with the hype sticker. The question was what these albums were. Full color Rolling Stones poster included. Oh, the original ins, uh, inner sleeve and the poster. They didn't put the fan club insert on all of them. So that person that got it right, I need them to send me a my room Caesar said, what about read mine? Huh? He said, how about reading mine? I'll read them. John Lennon Roots original Adams 8 label. With I, that, that John Lennon Roots has the insert and the original inner sleeve, I hope. And this is supposed to be a Led Zeppelin turquoise. We're going to soon find out. And he said he's getting sued for using Chuck Berry's lyrics. You thing. can't catch me. Come together. So that, uh, I need this from who, Clock? Uh, clock Radio. Clock Radio, I need you to send this, uh, my, your uh, shipping address to Mr. Underscore Stickermania at Yahoo.com. Okay. That's my uh, contact information through. All right, what did Caesar say? Let me read some of the other answers. Yeah, because yeah, that comment was in there before. Because I, I might be disappointed when I open up these two real Holy Grails. This one's a semi-Holy Grail, but the other two are big ones. We're talking about thousands of dollar ones. I would say just open it. Here. Are you going to read it? Mr. Speaker Oh, they wanted me to read something. Let me read a few. All right. We got Joseph Mantino. Led Zeppelin less than 2,000 copies were served with the album was recalled due to turquoise color sleeve. Rolling Stones, Let It Bleed didn't have deep grooves due to change with the cutter. Uh, that's a little wrong. I mean, that isn't what mine had. And then what did they say? He didn't have the John Lennon. He down there, the next line, John Lennon. Special wrote. promotional album, limited edition. I do not have that as a holy grail. John Lennon sings the great rock and roll hits. Yeah, but it didn't talk about the inserts. John Lennon's original Adams label with insert and original inner sleeve. Well, he got that. He was getting sued for using Chuck Berry's. Led Zeppelin to Monarch Hot Mix. No, it was the turquoise. I do have a Monarch uh, Led Zeppelin R2. RL coming in the next week, but this uh, turquoise is worth more than that. And let it bleed original in the U.S. and shrink with hype sticker and the poster inside. Boy, you had it all. You had it right on two of them there, Caesar. Pretty good. I haven't a clue, sadly. Nova's neck. All right, let's. The John Lennon album supposedly only. Uh, well, he said 3,000, but I read that there were less than 1,500 that were actually sold. This is supposed to be one of them. I've had a counterfeit on this John Lennon's Roots album several times. We'll wait on the Led Zeppelin to the end. I mean, we'll do that after this one. All right, Sticker Kid, watch out. Don't call me Sticker Kid no more. What do you want me to call you? Sticker Teenager. 
Sticker teenager, honest. Sticker teenager. That makes sense. Sorry about that. Sticker loser. Squeak. Y'all have a name. <laughs> Director. You don't even have a name. There we go. There's the John Lennon. Let's see what's in here. Let's see. Looks like it's all in the shipping box. You want to put that down there all the way for me, please? Can I destroy it? No, because he might need it to use it. Let's see that here it is. Never had original before. It's supposed to be made out of poster board, according to Ferry Cox, and not cardboard. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> be a little more careful, Frank. Can I get, move around you here? Or if you can see it, I'll just do it here. Be a little more careful, Frank. Move that off the table for him. Come on. There's the original inner sleeve. If you want to show that. And this is the original insert advertising all the other Adam, because you call them Adam 8 Limited. That's the insert, perfect shape. You got to see John Lennon's shoulder down there to be original. It's made out of poster board. And you got to be able to see the writing on the back and the writing on the spine. John Lennon sings the great rock and roll hits. You want to show that spine? And the most important thing is the matrix is on the side, is not on the dead wax, but on the label. Supposed to be right on the edge. I can faintly see it. It's the first time I've looked at one. Didn't keep it. Adam made it's John Lennon Roots. Pretty amazing. It looks like it's never been played. They shouldn't sell that. Look at that. They should keep both of these. <laughs> these are both holy grails. <laughs> Gary Hine, uh, Found a distributor that had 10 of these sealed left over after this whole debacle, and he sold them for a lot of money in his lifetime. First time I've ever seen the original inner sleeve and insert. KRWD said, wow, immaculate. That's pretty nice. I think that means nice. About as nice yeah, as the ones that Gary Hine must have got that were factory sealed. All right, let's put that away. And on to the Led Zeppelin. No! Now this is a little less than a thousand dollar Holy Grail, but this one's getting to be a five thousand dollar Holy Grail. That's why it's a little, Caesar is a little different than the RL Monarch. I don't think an RL Monarch of Led Zeppelin II has ever sold for five thousand yet. You seen it? Yep. On Twitter. All right, I need the box cutter again. She put it on. She has it. Thank you. And box yeah. cutter, hold on. I guess you're 16. I guess maybe you can do that. That's not fair. <laughs> I knew you were going to say it. <laughs> All the way from Ukraine. I thought maybe I got sipped when I found out it was from Ukraine, but he had 100% and it sells high end Ukraine. vinyl albums. Ukraine. Am I saying it wrong? Yes. Ukraine. 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 Sorry. Thanks for correcting me. Yeah. Special. I don't know if it was through mail, through a ship, or through uh, through the air. But it must have been the air if I got it in two weeks. Let's hope this is the real deal. Is 
Yeah, I'd say it's a different language. That's, it's all different language on that. Do you want to show that? Oh, this is cool. Here we go. Let's see, if we, boy, they really packed this up. Let's see if I not drop this one. Too. It's got tape on this too. There's a plum label. Mm -hmm. Alright, can you put that down there for me, sticker kid, please? Ooh, bubbles. I'm shaking. This is the second time I've ever had one of these. Last one sold for 3300 and this one's in nicer shape than the other one. Led Zeppelin, this flimsy laminated cover survived over 50 years. 55. Got the pinched ends like it's supposed to. Can they see the spine and all? Yeah. Really nice, but really fragile. That's the original polyline inner sleeve with the um, patent number on the bottom. You gotta have the whole thing. And it's supposed to have the, I think it's A2B4 matrix. Side two, one, side two. You got A1. And you got B4. No, it looks like B1. A1, B1. Very first press of Led Zeppelin from the United Kingdom. Definitely a hot mix. Looks like it's only been played a couple times. Truly amazing, truly amazing. Care WD said, please tell me the person who shipped that to you did not have that written on the outside of the package. I, I marked it out. Hmm? What? He did have that on the outside of the package. But it was? Yeah, but I marked it out. Yeah, but so like whenever the... He's saying so in the mail, like was coming to you, they could see what it was in No, no, it didn't say what was in it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the, I don't think it would have ever made it through customs and uh, all the places I went to if they knew what was in there. You're you're definitely correct. What a holy grail. Second one I've had in my lifetime. I'll probably never have another one. I know uh, Jason Rohoffs has one and Mike from the In Group has one. Mike from the Ingroove says in the next year this will definitely be a five thousand dollar album. Caesar said nice one, and then Kara WD said okay, good, cause holy cow. Holy cow. And then what was the name? Holy moly, no business. Holy moly, holy moly. This is gonna be a really big show. What is that? What's that to take off from? Tonight's gonna be a really big show. That's Ed Sullivan from 1964. Way before your time. Care WD said, really nice piece of history, Frank. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Joseph Mancino said, very nice albums. Yep, but that turned out pretty good because I didn't know exactly what was in there. I was hoping. I thought there was like $30,000 in there. $30,000? Yeah. I'd say $5,000 is a holy grail on record though. Maybe someday something will be $30,000. If ever, if ever an album's gonna be worth $30,000, maybe a butcher cover first date is worth $30,000 from the Livingston. That's worth about sixty-eight. dollars But 
in Led Zeppelin uh, music memorabilia outside of a first Led Zeppelin album from America signed by all four members with a COA. Uh, I'd say that Led Zeppelin turquoise is one of the most valuable there is. And he's just saying what he used to say. Really nice show. That's why he's saying that. Really big show? Uh, really big show. Yeah, she was confused why he said that. And I was like, that's just what he said. Always on that's that. what Ed Sullivan said before, right when he, uh, the very first, uh, Intro when the Beatles were on February 9th, 1964. Is Ed Sullivan better than the Beatles? No, but Ed Sullivan had the gumption that the Beatles would help his show, and he got them for $10,000 for three uh, shows, plus paid their hotel room and flight. That's nice. I'd say he got a hell of a deal. Hold on, read this one from Daniel. Daniel Castillo said the vinyl revival will come to uh -huh. halt if records are selling for 5k. Uh, yeah, but we're not talking about all records for 5k. We're just talking about yeah. holy grails. He said the same thing happened with comic collectibles. Why are you reading that? Well, maybe it makes sense a little bit, but uh, there aren't too many uh, near mint uh, Led Zeppelin turquoise that exist in the world today. Only You're talking about the very first album released by a, one of the bands in the stratosphere there with the Beatles. Have you ever had one of their first albums ever made, like the most rare album? Of who? The Beatles, like you ever had one of the most rare albums? I've had a lot of them, yeah. Please Please Me. I've never had the gold uh, label with uh, Dick James on it. I've had the second or third pressing. I was in the original uh, store baggie that uh, from Brian Epstein's uh, Liverpool store. I thought that was amazing. What do you need for? It? Yes, take a kid. Happy birthday. No. What do you want to say, sticker kid? Sticker, sticker teenager. What do you want to say? I'm gonna change your name right now, officially. Sticker teenager. Nice. Don't say leave. <laughs> All right. I was wondering if you could actually be a part of this stream, like fully. You want to be part of it? Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. All I do is just grab stuff. I mean, he's the one yeah. that has to do. Well, I'll get you more involved. And you really could just. Well, here's a big announcement. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be on an interview show next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is April 17th, and I told you, what show am I going to be on? You interrupted me. All right, well, go ahead. I'm just asking you something. Okay, go ahead. You give me stuff to put right here when you can really just toss it over here. All right. I, grab, I just need some help. I grab stuff and immediately just snatch it out of my hand. Oh, I'm sorry. I actually want to start doing stuff. All right, we'll get you more involved, okay? I'll give you my I'm word. I'm not trying to be rude. It's All just right. that I'm not really part of the stream as much. I'm just the background. You were at the beginning. You did a lot of things in the beginning. All right, we'll get you more involved. Do the last three comments real quick. Wait a minute. There's my announcement first. Oh, yeah. I'm on. Uh, this is my fifth interview, I think, with Rachel's Ghost on Wednesday, April 17th. She gave me the go-ahead. Pencil it in. 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So make sure you check out Rachel's Ghost this Wednesday. She'll do a 90-minute interview with me with uh, all my holy grails. And I have some other ones coming. Star Wars and maybe some other big deals concerning Andy Warhol. But that's all I can say. The complete... No, oh, Daniel Castillo said, Melinda brings up the ridiculous prices at record stores. Who does, Melinda? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Melinda has a great channel. But the, you're not going to find a Led Zeppelin turquoise at any record store I know. Uh, maybe, I would bet Mike from the in group doesn't have that in his record store for sale. KRWD said... Daniel Castillo will not. Can't Daniel Castillo? Not every album is a grill, so it won't happen. Talking about the five thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, yeah. There's only there's 
Butcher cover, Led Zeppelin, Turquoise, uh, a couple of jazz records. There aren't too many things in the five thousand dollar range. Clock Radio said, "Do you think album stab slabbing is a gimmick, or will it become a standard?" Uh, Heritage Auctions pushing it. I'm not a fan of it yet, but uh, I wouldn't want to have that turquoise in uh, slabbed forever up there on in frame on the wall. KRWD said, "Sticker Kid, Confucius." Once said, be careful what you ask for. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> All right, I saw this Christmas album real quick today. Beatles Christmas album, original from 1970. Uh, the Beatles fan club in America sold it for $222. I only had it two days. Somebody put it up there pretty cheap. And I saw the small indentation on the label. And I knew that was... Uh, the clue, this was the real deal. You can see Ringo's uh, eyeballs on that bottom picture there on the on the uh, left side. I knew it was real. Still in the shrink. Let's do more comments. We yeah. gotta show the Star Wars. We gotta yeah, we'll take some comments. Give them two comments so I can start right there. Joseph Mantino said, that's great, Mr. Sticker Mania. And Daniel Castillo said, but HQRs are selling for 150 and people are now less interested. Yeah, well, HQR, an HQR from Mobile Fidelity and a first pressing from Led Zeppelin that was ever released in the world, you're talking about apples and oranges there. I like apples more. All right, we got this up. I sold my other Star Wars poster. Can you hold on to that, sir? Can help us a little bit? This is, this is the first poster ever to advertise Star Wars. Teaser poster, Myler, one sheet. Uh, says, um, 1976, coming to your galaxy this summer. I'd say that's pretty amazing. Has the 1976 date is wearing off on the bottom. But look at that W in Star Wars. It's an upside down M. That was a mistake that was quickly corrected. It's got some pinholes in the corners, but it's in, uh, got a couple creases, but it's rare as hand's teeth, very good plus condition. My other Star Wars poster, my one year anniversary poster, cake poster sold for $2,777. And I sent offers of twenty-five, fifty-five to five interested watchers on this poster. My bet is this will sell tomorrow. I got the same bet. Let's bet twenty dollars for it. I'm get twenty bucks you on for tonight, right? Huh? All right. Let's put that away. Throw your questions out here. I'm going to show some autographs. My question is... Here, why are you a cracker? Somebody messaged me about this Ringo Starr 92, 90, 1990 autograph on year 16. He was interested, but only if I had a Roger Epperson COA. And I have a Roger Eaton. COA, but he says he's had 30 Ringo autographs and he guaranteed he said in two messages he knew it was a real deal. But I gave him a five hundred dollar offer and he hasn't bought it yet. But somebody will. That's another thing I'm bet will sell in the next 24 hours. Because it's music related, it's on sheet music for year 16, which was a number one hit for Ringo Starr, even though it's not quite politically correct, this, this song, the song this year, but in 1973, it was the number one. What? 
The butcher cover that you peeled, is that the one that you gave away? The one I gave away was the one that had water damage. Uh, this one right here. See, it's, it was in a. Uh, it was sold for seventy nine cents in a uh, Goodwill. It has a cutout hole, and then they stored it in a basement where all the Beetle albums had got water damaged. And I bought it because this was in the very last picture. I knew there was a butcher cover underneath, and I was just hoping it was the East Coast. And I was right. It's got a number three. They're on the bottom. Dang, everything goes your way. I get lucky sometimes. But I, I, I have a good hunch. I've done a lot of experience that I can figure things out. That's my sign. 2006 was signed by Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr. This one Ringo only signed his first name. But that Paul McCartney autograph in the uh, light blue sky is pretty amazing. And that's what I'm talking about. It's one thing to have Paul and Ringo's autograph, but to have it on Abbey Road, one of their, their last swan song album masterpiece, takes it to a whole nother level. Got a COA from the ultimate Beatles autograph expert, Frank Casio. Joseph Mantino said beautiful signed items. Yep. Dana Castillo said has the first state butcher sold. The first state butcher cover has not sold yet. I sent offers to 35 interested buyers yesterday, last night for seven, uh, eight, well, a dollar less than 18,000, 17, not $17,999. Oh my God. What? That's a lot of money. I'm not making it up. It's probably more than mine. Yeah, when I saw Dave Frazier the other day, I went to his house, looked at his collection. He said, you really have a first state butcher cover for $18,000, $19,000? I said, yes, I do. It's one of the, it's in near mint condition. It's one of the last hundred in the world that's in that shape. He goes, well, that's pretty amazing. I didn't bring that today. That's it. locked up in my bank vault. You touched it too many times. <laughs> yeah, I don't really want to show it anymore until it's sold. You got a bank vault. Okay. Yeah, I got a bank vault. If you're an interested buyer and you show me the money, I'll show it to you. That's my Let It Be laser disc and the original factory shrink. I've shown that before. Pioneer Video Incorporated, made in Japan. The ultimate way to have the Let It Be movie since they'll never seem to release it from 1982. With a laser disc with no laser rock. I have a laser disc player in the other room. All the bootleg copies of Let It Be have been made off of one of these laser discs. Yeah. All right. Where are we at on time? We got 10 minutes left. 10 minutes left. So come on, sticker kid. You wanted the show. You got five minutes. What, what do you got to... What do you got, bring, what do you got to bring to the show? You got any jokes? Yeah, I got five minutes. You Let's want to go. show this book? Led Zeppelin book for me? You want to present it? You want to talk about the Sergeant Pepper? You want to talk about the Sergeant Pepper? Uh, you want to talk about your uh, shirts? What do you want to do? I'm trying to get you involved. Here we got the Ringo Star. Back off Boogaloo. This was all about telling Paul McCartney to back off. I think George must have wrote the song for Ringo because he wrote a lot of hit songs for Ringo at that time, even though he didn't take credit. That's the original matte and the original glossy picture sleeve. But what makes it really rare Got this from Perry Cox, a near mint unplayed record on the blue label. The very first pressing of Back Off Boogaloo. It's, you can find the blue label in the UK and stuff, but to find it from the USA, United States, is really tough. But that's a story where Ringo and Paul weren't getting along in 
and the famous first picture sleeve from the Beatles that had Yoko Ono on both sides. Ballad of John and Yoko. You know when Now and Then went to number one in England a few months ago? It was the first number one in England since, you know what? Ballad of John and Yoko. United States, it didn't go to number one. I think it might only got to six here in the United States. But in England, they take their Beatles seriously. I had a lot of questions about this Led Zeppelin book that was sold on their very first tour at the merch table, hardback book. I sent out offers today on this at $119. With Jimmy Page right up front. Jimmy Page was a mastermind. He got these three other people together and he wanted a super group and he picked the right people. John Paul Jones, John Bottom, and he took a chance with Robert Plant and it paid off. Show this on the last one, but finish this off unless you got some questions. My amazing Factory Reel to Reel, Volume 1 and Volume 2 of the White Album that has all the Paula's Dead edits on seven of the songs. And it even has uh, one section, I think it's Carry, Carry Me Back, Can You Take Me Back, that whole section is edited out at the end of revolution number nine beautiful shape ampex tapes 1970 and it plays wonderful on my akaya real to real player volume two That's a 1970, and this is a 1970 also, and this is a 1970. Factory pre-recorded of All Things Must Pass by George Harrison with the true Phil Spector George Harrison mixes that made this the number one album, The Wall of Sound. Beautiful shape also, no corner splits. That's a three and three quarters of inch speed where these are seven and a half fast speed that sound better because of faster speed. Another seven and a half, I don't have the box, but I got the, uh, a beautiful pre-recorded of, uh, factory pre-recorded of McCartney's 1970 album, McCartney. And in the press sheets, this was uh, 50 years ago on April 10th. Paul McCartney announced that the Beatles had broke up. Knee knocks one on ones at any Beatles record with Pete Best on drums? I sold all my Pete Best. Uh, I have some in the other room, but I sold all my Pete Best autographs and I sold my Denny Lane autographs and I had some Klaus Warman. And Sticker Kids, wake up! Rolling Stone finishes out. Sold this yesterday for $122. This is a Monarch pressing. My new thing is to find out Monarch pressings and all these Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin albums. Some reason with the ammo on the bottom. This is a 1972 Exile. Some reason it's just a little more of an audiophile pressing from Los Angeles. And Mike from the in group says that too, that he doesn't understand it either. But if you have MO on the bottom monitor, for some reason it's more of an audiophile pressing than the other pressing plants. It's got the 12 postcards all attached. It's hard to find these with all 12 postcards still all attached. It's got the Unipack cover. That didn't last long because all the record buyers were complaining about it. The Unipack cover didn't last long. 
And then went back to the gatefold cover. All right, I think we're almost out of the hour. Yep. I told you I got a Led Zeppelin II Monarch coming next week. It's in very good plus condition. I got it, won it for uh, $700. We'll see if it sounds better than this PR Presswell pressing. I'm sure it will. It's got the original matte cover. That's in real nice shape. Hard to find that where the green's still there on the spine. The original 1969 inner sleeve from Atlantic Records. The most important at all. It's got RL and the dead wax on both sides. The small dead wax on side two. But on the Monarch pressing, it has RL SS on both sides where the PR pressing only has RL SS on side two. All right, sticker, sticker, teenager, lighten us up, tell us a joke, take us out. You got to go out on your scooter today, you got to go to a park. Daniel, do the thing. You got George Harrison on your shirt. Dan, Daniel Castillo said if you get a hold of another turquoise, that means they can't be too rare. What's that, another turquoise? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I searched for years and years, and I know I got two of them in a couple, in two months, but I'd say I'll, I won't see another one available for over a year. How many, tur how many people do you know that has a turquoise Led Zeppelin? Not too many. All right. Told you we might be having some Andy Warhol, the lady that has these Star Wars posters that was, knew the uh, man that was, uh, did the campaign for the first Star Wars. She also worked for the Andy Warhol company back in the uh, late 60s and has a, a lot of Andy Warhol. So I'm hoping we have some stuff to show on the uh, Rachel Ghost interview coming up on Wednesday. There's the Andy Warhol mm -hmm. portrait is inside here. Bear WD said sticker kit. What did they say to the magician? No, what did the fisherman What did the fisherman say to the magician? What did the fisherman say to the magician? I don't know. What did he say? Pick a card. Pick a code. Pick, Pick a, a cod. Pick a any cod. Talking about oh. cod, but he's saying cod oh. like a fish. Um, pick a cod, any cod. Pick a cod, pick a any cod. <laughs> you think that's funny? <laughs> yeah, quit acting like you're not happy. All right, we talked about everything. The uh, Andy Warhol. Wow. We talked about the. the didn't bring it's up the these Australian. How these Australian imports are so amazing and sounding. We got a Beatles for sale, and we got a with the Beatles. I haven't sold them yet, but I've sent some offers for $99 on this one, I know. I might have sent an offer at $99 on this. You haven't heard Beatles for sale until you hear this Australian pressing. Same with the, with the Beatles. There's more detail. Don Bartley and crew did more, something with the uh, original master tapes that they couldn't do in England. I guess they had better equipment. The Germans and the Australians. All right, I think that is it until uh, Wednesday. Check me out on Rachel's Ghost. I have some other amazing things coming in. We on won't Monday. be doing this. Are we doing a stream Wednesday night since you're doing Rachel? Or are you not want to do two streams that day? That'd be a lot. Oh, uh, that'll be too tough. Yeah, so we won't be back. Unless you think I should do it. No, I mean, we can wait. Till I think um, I'll be bringing out all the heavy guns for Rachel's Ghost. That'll be my only uh, live stream on Wednesday, 2 p.m. April 17th, Eastern Standard Time. Rachel's Ghost going to interview me for 90 months, minutes. It will be intense. Isn't that right, Sticker? Sticker teenager? Sticker granddaughter? Mm -hmm. Everybody say bye from Louisville. Bye. See you Wednesday. Thanks a lot.